This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Here we are with another exciting edition of the Financial Beat. Ladies and gentlemen, Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know right now because Logan is certain to lay a few pearls of wisdom on us today, uh, all having to do with getting you to and through retirement. My name is Ryan Stutz. Logan Sadler, of course, the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, serving you in Southern California. How's it going, Logan? I'm doing great, Ron. Uh, looking forward to a great show. How are you doing today? Oh, great. It's been busy lately, but uh, my mm -hmm. goodness, you know, that's better than the alternative, I guess. It just seems how life is right now, right? It yeah. seems like everyone's busy. Exactly. 888-823-PLAN uh, <laughs> is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan. 888-823-PLAN. But we'll get back to that in just a little while here on the show. We really appreciate you being with us. Uh, let's talk about professions and, and start with talking uh, about uh, educators, teachers, Think about the clients you work with and, and uh, all these different professions out there. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to ask if you find that people with similar jobs tend to approach financial planning in the same way as their peers. Mm -hmm. And then explain, if you would, how you typically deal with people in these different professions and the benefits or challenges that their career mindset might bring to their financial planning. So let's start with teachers. Uh, how do yeah. they look at things and what do you do to help them? Yeah, that's a great great point, point. Um, and it is, it's true because most uh, most of these jobs I think we're going to go over here, um, most of them are very similar to their other coworkers or other other people in that industry. Um, again, everyone's a little bit different, right? Or in some cases, a lot different. Um, but for the most case, I would say that some of them do fall into those same types of criteria. And now, uh, starting with teachers, so we do work with a a lot of teachers here at our firm. And some of the some of the similarities I will see is you know one thing that they're all pretty used to is consistency, right? A lot of them have had a paycheck for 10, 20, 30 years, and they really didn't have to worry about where the next one was coming from, right? Because yeah. a lot of that, you you show up, you put in your work, and you do your job, and uh, you know you get paid, right? So it's nice where it's not like some of the other industries that might be a little bit more up and down based off the economy and things like that. Yeah. So they're typically used to a pretty pretty smooth ride. Not to say it's not a hard job or there's not a lot of stuff going on inside the classrooms or inside the schools, but just so to speak, you know, as far as the paycheck goes. Yeah. Um, so I would say that makes a lot of them by nature a little bit more conservative, right? Because they're sometimes just used to um, having that consistency. So you see them tend to not be super high risk. One thing I'll see on the downside, I'll say, is where I see with a lot of teachers, and it's not their fault, um, is they tend to have a lot of uh, scattered investments, right? Mm -hmm. So that a lot of times they have uh, people that come into their lunchrooms or little seminars at the school or whatnot, and people sell them a life insurance policy or an annuity, or they might open a 403B even though they already had a 403B somewhere else, right? So they tend to have a lot of different accounts that they've kind of opened throughout the years, and they typically don't have a financial planner, right? Yeah. They don't typically have somebody that's orchestrating everything in the plan to help kind of help meet their end goals. So I would say that's one thing I do see where I would love to see that, uh, you know, get a little bit cleaner inside the schools there as far as the consistency and really having a financial planner, I think would be more beneficial to most of them. And in the retirement phase, Ron, while I'm planning for retirement for these, for these clients, right, that are teachers, it tends to be a little bit different of a conversation as far as income generation, because a lot of them might have a very lucrative pension, right? One that they've put their heart in years for and are going to have a pretty good sized paycheck in retirement. So now a lot of the conversation might be a little bit different than maybe some of our other uh, jobs and trades we're going to talk about here. But those are those are some of the ways that we typically uh, talk about with, with teachers and some of the strategies we might have to, to look at implementing. Let me just take this opportunity to say this, and, and I think yeah, I'm pretty sure that you agree with me 100 percent. Teachers are really important. I, I really respect teachers, and they are all underpaid. Now that I, yeah. now that I got that out of the way, you know? yeah, it's definitely definitely a hard job. I come from a, a married. Well, I shouldn't say I came from, but I married into mm -hmm. a family of a lot of teachers, and yeah, it's a 
definitely one of those jobs where you got to put your hours in and there's a lot of, uh, uh, it's definitely a difficult job in just many different areas. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, let's talk about doctors. I mean, you know, they have to go to school for a long time in order to get where they are. And, uh, you know, they work very hard. And, uh, you know, on, on the other hand, they tend to make a lot of money, uh, completely yep. different from teachers. How about them as a group? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, doctors, again, we have a, we have quite a few doctors that are in our uh, client base that we work with, as well as, you know, nurses and things like that. But speaking specifically to doctors, one of the things that's typically interesting is a lot of them don't get started till later on in life, right? Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they're going to school, as you said, then they're paying back student loans and things like that. So a lot of the times they don't really get up and move until their 30s or mid, mid 30s to where they're really starting to make good money. And then by the time they get ahead, you know, they get way ahead because a lot of them do make, like you said, pretty good income. And some of the things that we see with doctors is their, um, when it comes to the retirement plan, is they're used to a very, very high income, which is great. But when a lot of us think about high income, we probably think of high taxes, right? Mm -hmm. So they're used to paying a lot in taxes. And so one of the things I think is very interesting for a lot of our doctor clients is a lot of the tax planning strategies that we have to try to implement because a lot of them do end up saving a lot of money, right? So they have, you know, maybe they have a few million dollars or multiple millions of dollars in retirement accounts and things like that. Now it's the problem is they made a really good income their whole life and now they're probably going to have a really good income in retirement. So taxes are still going to be part of the conversation. So using things like index universal life insurance for some monies can be sometimes of a good tax strategy for them or maybe Roth conversions and things like that. Um, there's a lot of different things that we would like to implement on those higher net worth clients to try to manage that tax exposure throughout retirement. So it's one of those things where it's a kind of a double-edged sword with them because again, high income is great, but then so are higher taxes are not as great as we would think. So it's one of those things where the planning tends to be a little bit more in depth where we'll have to dive a little bit deeper just due to the income and things like that throughout their earning years and then possibly in their retirement. How about engineers? I'm sure you probably have some engineers as clients. What are they like? Yeah, what's funny is I, I can't pick favorites, right? Um, but they're one of my favorites to, to deal with for sure. Because um, so I talk to a client, right? Let's say I say, hey, you know, Ron, we're sitting down, we're going over your investment plan, and I say, you know, you could take a hundred thousand dollars a year of income. Uh, here's where your tax bracket is going to be, and we're going to use these mutual funds or this ETF or this stock portfolio and this annuity, right? Right. Um, a lot of people, that's that's about as into the depth as the weeds as they want to go, right? <laughs> but not an engineer, right? Most of the time they're saying, <laughs> well, what stocks, what portfolio, what's this, what's that, right? They want to know how it works, right? That's their... Uh, that's their DNA. And to be honest with you, those are, I love to get into the weeds, right? I just don't like to see clients' eyes glaze over sometimes because they are like, okay, I'm bored, right? Mm -hmm. But I love to get into the weeds. And a lot of the times the engineer clients, they want to know if we're doing annuities, like how, how does this annuity work, right? Why are they doing this or that? Why are they paying come. If we're using stocks or mutual funds or ETFs, you know, they really want to understand the intricate parts of it. So it makes it a very deep and detailed conversation, which again, I, I do tend to enjoy. Yeah. And, and they want all the details and they want to really get into the weeds and they yep. want to uh, have all the math explained to them as well. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because as I always talk about, we could print out our financial plans can, you know, we typically try to make them very simplistic, go over the highlighted information as well as some of the, the the long term and the planning topics in there as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, with the engineers, I'm like, hey, guess what? I could print you out a 50 page document, right? And they're like, oh, okay, they get excited, right? <laughs> and so uh, it'll show you everything inside of it. So yeah, it, it definitely is a different conversation. That's the kind of stuff that would bore me to death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hey, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, getting to and through retirement as always. And we're talking about investing with uh, people uh, who are from different professions who do, do different things for a, for a living. And Logan Sadler, of course, is available for a conversation. All you got to do is call 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN, no matter what you do for a living. Let's move on to entrepreneurs and small business owners. Those folks, I would imagine, have a lot in common. And, you know, how does the, the mind of a person like this work? Yeah, that's a great, great point, because... Um, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Well, I'm a business owner here at our firm. And uh, it's one of those things where um, I can relate to them a lot, right? Because I go through similar uh, things in my business. And again, every business is different. We all have different clientels and different service models and all that stuff. But sure. from the core of it, I can understand a lot of what they're doing and what they're going through or, or might be going through. Um, the one thing I will notice is, is that a lot of them tend to be very, very focused 
in the business, right? They're very, very in the weeds. They they have a hard time delegating sometimes, right? And this isn't every business owner, but just just kind of off the cusp there, right? So one thing I'll see is a lot of times it's very, very hard to see five or 10 years or 20 years down the road into your retirement plan when you're buried inside the business, right? Yeah. You're focused on, which a lot of us go through that in our jobs, but as a business owner, it might be a little bit more extreme because you're trying to grow the business. You're trying to generate more revenue for the firm, maybe hiring or, or whatever the cases are going on, right? You got a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of them tend to focus on the here and now about making it month to month, year to year. Sure. And it's very, very hard for some of them to think about things like retirement accounts, right? And so I've seen a lot of clients where they build up a lot of wealth inside the business, but maybe they didn't really generate a very good retirement uh, deferred comp programs and things like that, where they're going to be in a different spot into retirement. The other thing I've noticed is a lot of our business owners, they don't focus a whole lot on growing the business where it can maybe run without them, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when you talk about things like maybe bringing in a family member or hiring someone below to run that corporation or that or that business for you, right? Will you retire or setting it up pretty to be able to sell that business um, and, and then walk away? It, it's something that you typically got to do ahead of time and kind of plan it out as you're going. So a lot of the times with our business owner clients, those are some of the conversations we're having about business valuations and growing your business and being able to uh, take advantage of things that way. But also thinking about down the road by doing things like an IRA or a SEP IRA or a simple IRA or 401ks and really making sure you're being attractive to other um, employees to come work for you by having things like the health insurance and the retirement plans and stuff like that. So those are typically where our conversations will go down that down that road with an entrepreneur or, or a business owner client. Yeah, I'm thinking about these folks and thinking that they're probably used to a lot of risk in their life in general. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that they may be a little more comfortable uh, with risk in their portfolios. But also, uh, you know, you had a, a really good point when you said, you know, think about how much the business is worth if you're not there. If you sell your business, yep. you got to consider the fact that, you know, you're a big part of the worth of that company. If you're not around, it's not worth as much for sure. That, that's a great way to put it. I mean, there's a, one of one of my uh, favorite advisors I know, he, he has this thing where he'll say, uh, you know, if, you, if you're if you a business owner, right, we always talk about having a business, having a business, having a business. But the problem is if you're not there and that business can't operate and make money, then you just have a job, right, mm -hmm. that you get to show up to when you want, right? Yeah. So it doesn't operate without you. So like you said, Ron, that's a very, very critical component to, to running a business. We're talking about different professions today on the Financial Beat. And how about realtors, uh, brokers, mm -hmm. real estate agents. I mean, that's a, uh, that's a heck of a field to be in. And, and uh, yeah. you know, I know a lot of, a lot of realtors there. It seems like there's one on every corner in, in town, <laughs> you know, but my yep. goodness, what, how do they think about things? Yeah, it is funny, like you had said, realtors is one of those things that kind of goes in cycles, right? Where yeah. everybody's a realtor for, for a certain period of time, right? And then it then it kind of thins out. And obviously, you got some of those ones that have been doing it 10 or 15 or 20 years and have just done phenomenal at it, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of them out here in our local areas that are just very, very well known, have really reputable names, and uh, have really built a, a great career, right? Mm -hmm. um, and probably made a lot of money throughout the process, which is which is great, right? Um but there's some of them where I would say one of the things I do notice, Ron, is two things. One is they only invest in real estate, right? So if they are doing any investing, um, they're investing only in real estate, which, as you know, if you've listened to the show before, I'm a huge fan of real estate. I think real estate is a great asset class. You know, I'm not one of those advisors that you know doesn't believe in real estate. I think it's an awesome asset class, great wealth building tool. Um, but I do believe in diversification as well, right? So a lot of them don't have much in like liquid assets like IRAs or 401ks or, or savings accounts and things like that. So I will say that's the two pros and cons I've seen a lot of realtors do. Now, again, not all of them. I have some realtor clients that have done very well. They've been very consistent their whole life. One thing I've seen with realtors is you go through these phases, right? Well, like a lot of sales jobs or commission jobs where you make really, really good money yeah. and then maybe no money. Yeah, right? exactly. So <laughs> it's hard for, for people like that to get on a savings budget or to go over your expenses or to contribute to IRAs or 401ks, right? Just because you're like, well, that'd be great, Logan. I'd love to put money away, but I have no idea what I'm making next month, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm talking to the ones that have been doing it for one to three years, three to five years, 10 to 15 years, right? By that time, you kind of have a pretty good idea through different economies, kind of what your income is going to look like. And that that is a really good time where you need to start saving every dollar you can and make sure you're investing. Again, real estate's a great asset class, 
but make sure you're putting it into some other uh, other avenues as well. Man, if you're just starting out in that business or just haven't been done doing it very long, I mean, it's feast or famine sometimes in the real estate business. For sure. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about one more, and then we'll wrap up this particular conversation. But how about government employees? Do you find that they have a lot in common in the way that they think about planning for retirement? Yeah, I mean, um, them and teachers, I would say, I'm not lumping everything together, right? But for the most part, you know, they have, they're used to, they're a little bit more conservative. Like I was saying, they're, they're typically relying more in their retirement years for that pension. Um, now I have a couple that I'm thinking of off the top of my head that I work with where they have just done phenomenal. They're government, government workers. They put away money in, you know, 457s or 403Bs and 401Ks, and they have pretty large amounts of money in those as well as they have a very good pension when they're ready to retire. So now a lot of it's going to be, you know, tax planning, investment planning and things like that um, are very, very detailed as it transitions into retirement. And a lot of the times more government employees, I will say they tend to be a little bit more conservative with their investments as well. Again, not all of them, but it just tends to be that way because they're more used to that consistency of a paycheck and things like that. So their tendencies as far as risk tend to be a little bit less. Um, so managing that is definitely one of those things, but you know, it, it is interesting, Ron, uh, one of our things is we specialize in retirement planning, right? So it's so interesting by going over these, I believe it was six different industries where every one of the advices will be a little bit different. Every client's going to be a little bit different. Every family that comes in is going to have a different goal or a different hope for their outcome. Right. Um, but one thing is in common with all of that is they need a good financial planner and a good team to help transition them to and through retirement, right? And that's where our firm comes in. Um, we specialize in retirement planning. So we help uh, doctors, we help nurses, we help engineers, we help realtors, we help pretty much anybody that's gearing up and getting ready for retirement. We are a specialist in that field. And so if you're getting close to retirement, maybe you're 55 years old, maybe you're 60 years old, and you're listening to the show and going, you know what? I'd like to see if I have what it takes to, to retire this year or retire next year or in the next five years. Um, and get a retirement checkup, we call it. That's where you go ahead and give us a call and uh, you get to come in and spend an hour with myself and we'll go over what we call our discovery meeting where we'll see if we're a good fit uh, where you get to interview us and we get to interview you just to see if we're a good fit to work together and see if we are the right team to help transition you to and through retirement. There's no cost or obligation involved with this conversation. And if you'd like to have one with Logan Sadler, it's 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. That's good for a discovery meeting. Find out what's going on in your portfolio. Find out how your plan is working. If you have a plan, a lot of people don't have one. You need one for sure. 888-823-PLAN is the number to call to make it happen. That's the number for Regary Financial with offices in Hemet and Redlands. Talk to Logan Sadler for free, and there are no strings attached. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. Stay with us. Are you worried about whether you're ready for retirement? Logan Sadler and the team at Regary Financial can help. Just text the word ADVICE to 21000 to take Regary Financial's free retirement roadmap checkup. Text the word ADVICE to 21000 and we'll send you a link to all of our free resources. From there, you can click on the button for the retirement roadmap checkup. You'll just have to answer a few questions and then you can see how prepared you are for retirement. This is a great starting point for people just starting to think about retirement. Text the word ADVICE to 21000 to get your free retirement roadmap checkup today. That's the word ADVICE to 21000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sattler, VP, Chief Investment Officer, Regary Financial. Regary has been around for a long time, and uh, at this wonderful firm, they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists, 
anybody involved in your financial life, and Regary can offer you well-rounded guidance in all things financial. You can have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. Won't cost you anything, won't carry with it any kind of obligation, so why not check it out? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, and you can set up a time to have your conversation with Logan. And again, you kind of get to know him. He can get to know you. Find out if you'd like to work together. If not, hey, that's cool too. Maybe at some point in the future you might decide to. 888-823-PLAN is the number to call to make that happen. Got a quote of the week. I really like this one. It's from Susan Cain. I don't have any idea who Susan Cain is, but I read it earlier this week. And it goes along with what you know. You and I have talked about a lot of times before. Spend your free time the way you like, not the way you think you're supposed to. Boy, that makes a yeah, lot of sense. That does make a lot of sense. And I think that's a, um, that's a good little quote there. Because like you said, I mean, we, when we're trying to recharge, right, which is what we do typically during our free time, yeah. it's important to do it how you want to do it. Yeah. Not lot, how you think you should. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think, you know, I ought to be catching up on this paperwork or whatever. But, hey, just do what you want and uh, like what you do. <laughs> hey, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just came up with that on the spur of the moment there. <laughs> Our next quote of the week will be by Ron Sutz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, hey, you know, there are people out there who say a lot of things and they don't really mean it the way that it comes out. Uh, so let's call this segment of our conversation, Say What You Mean. Some people in the financial world are like that. They speak in code, and it's important mm-hmm. to learn how to crack that code. And an example mm-hmm. that I would throw at you, Logan, and you can translate this to me, is what if you have somebody come in and, and uh, sit down and talk to you for the very first time, and they say, I don't really like dealing with financial advisors because the last guy I talked to said, We've experienced a significant market correction this month. And I thought, (laughs) what in the world does that mean? I want to talk to somebody who speaks English. Can you translate that for us? Yeah, I mean, uh, nicely put, right, is uh, your portfolio lost money, right? (laughs) Your accounts are down is, uh, so to speak, what they're saying there. Again, depending on what market investments you're in in there, that that, that depends on how far they went down. But yeah, when they say we've experienced some turbulence or we've experienced some significant uh, market corrections this month or this year, you're probably expecting to say that your your portfolio has lost money and your accounts are down, right? Now, for some of you, it might be a big deal, depending on your plan. And for some of you, it might not be as big of an impact. Act, but that's essentially what the translation is. Well, a lot of people, you know, in the financial industry try to talk over your head and make it sound really complicated. And, you know, maybe you will say, hey, well, I guess he knows what he's talking about and you won't question it. So, you know, with Logan Sadler, you always get straight talk. So that's one thing I like about you. So, well, thank you. Uh, here's, here's another one. Uh, what they said we're forecasting significant upside potential for this stock. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, it means that they're, they're, the firm has taken probably, or your, or your accounts have taken a large position in stock because they're trying to forecast something, right? They're hoping that this this uh, this market cycle is going to go up, or maybe they, they had some quotas or something to meet, uh, depending on what firms they work for, right? So, you know, basically what that would mean is that they're probably taking a, a stance to go pretty heavily shifted to equities. And I, what I always always say is for some of you out there, again, that might be a good thing. Might You might need more equity exposure at that time. And for some of you, it might not be the right move, of course, just depending on your financial plan. But essentially, when you look at that, they're definitely, they're making a large shift to be more aggressive at this point, or they're, they're trying to make some quotas or had to meet some quotas, uh, depending on the firm and, and their, uh, the business they work for. I've saved the best one for last. You know, are you, are you ready for this one? <laughs> I'm ready. I had one person actually say that they had a financial advisor and weren't really happy with him, and so they decided to call you. And she said that she was told your portfolio has a very high alpha, and I'm worried about your potential for reverse dollar cost averaging once you have to start your RMDs. What in the world is is he talking about, or she, yeah. or whoever that advisor was? Yeah, um, this one essentially, right? And again, some clients are very, very uh, 
very, very uh, comfortable in this conversation, very, very uh, intelligent and, 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 and just really inve- emerged in the investing world, right? So they understand some of these terminologies and things. Some clients don't, right? Some are, they work their whole lives and they're trusting their advisor or, or, or their team to do this for them. And so when you use terms like this, you're being rather confusing in some cases, right? So to translate, like you said, Ron, is basically, basically they're trying to make it sound like rocket science, right? Maybe they'll give you uh, Maybe they'll just make things sound as complex as possible. So maybe they'll just let you manage all their money, right? Or maybe they're uh, maybe they're uh, just trying to kind of keep your business by making things tech uh, sound tech- technical, right? So mm-hmm. in this instant, essentially, Ron, like you said, is they're basically at a point where they're saying that they're they're basically their portfolio has a pretty high amount of risk, which is basically saying that when they're reverse do- dollar cost averaging, essentially just meaning taking income out of the portfolio, they're worried about potentially, you know, running out of money or, or causing uh, a deep, deep uh, deficit in the, in the account balance, right? So it is funny when you look at, uh, when you look at how some advisors translate some things to their clients. And as an advisor, I think it's your job to know your client, right? I have some, I have a lot of clients around where I can tell them the alpha, the beta, the standard deviation of their portfolio. And they would, they know exactly what they're talking about because they're saying a lot of those terms back to me. So I know that. And there's some clients that really just want to come in and go over the, the groundwork of the plan and say, hey, you know, what does our risk look like? What type of income can we get? I mean, just very um, general uh, you know, terminology as far as their overall account balance. And they don't want to be talked to like a computer, right? They want mm-hmm. to be talked to like a person. And I think that's something that's super important to, to identify. When you're meeting with an advisor, you want to make sure you can understand one of the most important things I feel is the how they communicate with you and how you communicate with them. That line of communication is, is to me, key to the relationship because I think the relationship with the advisor and the clients is what is probably most important because, again, any advisor out there probably has access to some maybe good investments and things like that. But the communication of how you communicate and how they relay information to you is, is, is to my, in my opinion, key. Yeah, the bottom line in all of this is work with somebody who's clear in his or her communication. And I think you can tell by listening to this program that uh, Logan Sadler talks straight. He doesn't try to talk over anybody's head, and uh, the communication will be good. If you'd like to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, all you got to do is call this number, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. Call that number today. Leave your name and your phone number. You will get a call back first part of the week, and you can arrange a time to have a conversation with Logan, either via Zoom, if you want to do it using technology, or you might want to come in one of the convenient offices. There are two, Hammond and also Redlands. You can have that conversation with Logan Sadler, kind of a getting-to-know-you situation. It's called a discovery meeting. You discover things about him, he discovers things about you, and you can decide if you'd like to work together. And it's just that simple. 888 888- 823 plan is your number to call to make it happen. We're talking about getting to and through retirement as we always do. This is the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. There's more on the way after this quick timeout. Are you tired of feeling like taxes are out of your control? Take charge of your financial future with Logan Sadler's 2023 Guide to Tax Planning. This comprehensive resource is more than just a collection of tax tips. It can help you optimize your Social Security, retirement savings, and investments. And with the help of Regary Financial and Insurance, you can rest assured that you're making the right decisions. Download the guide today and start taking control of your financial future. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and get the guide for free. Just text ADVICE to 21000. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to The Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat. The beat goes on, as they say. Logan Sadler, of course, the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, uh, serving you from two convenient offices in Hemet and also Redlands. And Logan has his radio show every single week, but there are podcasts you can listen to and a whole bunch of videos on YouTube if you'd like to check them out. And Logan, uh, talk for just a moment about how folks can get to all that good information. Yeah, so if you uh, 
uh, like the radio show here, we are a podcast. So you can head over to wherever it is you download podcasts. Might be Apple Music, might be Amazon, might even be Spotify. And you can type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And there's going to be well over 100 episodes now recorded for you and put up there that you could check out at your convenience. And we also have a YouTube channel. So you can head over to YouTube, wherever it is you download uh, YouTube at, right? Probably on your phone nowadays. But you can head over there to YouTube and type in The Financial Beat. And we do a video each week on different retirement planning topics or even just viewer questions that a lot of you might have that we want to take a deeper dive into. Roth, what are Roth conversions, right? How does that work? How much money should I have saved by age 60? You know, what are the five pitfalls of retirement planning, right? We go over a lot of fun stuff like that for you to check out on our YouTube platform. Head over there, click subscribe and like the video, and please leave us a comment of maybe some other videos you'd like us to do in the future. And let me say, you do a great job on those, Logan. Uh, really educational and informative, and I don't get bored when I watch them. <laughs> so, well, thank you. That's, that's my that's overall good. goal is to keep everybody awake as long as I can there. <laughs> well, 888-823 plan is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. It could be on the phone, it could be via Zoom, it can be in one of the convenient offices. 888-823 plan is your number to call to make it happen. I'll give you that number again coming up in just a few minutes here. There are obvious financial moves that uh, sometimes aren't so obvious to some folks out there. Mm -hmm. At first glance, each of these statements I'm about to make here seem like basic common sense that everybody ought to know. Uh, but when we look at the way people actually behave with their money, it seems that common sense sometimes get thrown out the window. Uh, for example, <laughs> buy low and sell high. That's something that we've all heard. We know it's the right way to do things, but people don't always follow that. Yeah, that sounds uh, off the cusp, right? When you think about retirement planning or just investing in general, let's say if I put money into the market and I buy XYZ in stocks, right, or whatever it is, the whole thought is, yeah, well, I know that I'm going to try to buy it when it's a little bit lower and I'll just wait a long time or a few weeks or months or years and sell it when it's high. It sounds very simple, right? And the problem is it all looks good on paper. We've all heard that before, right? I think uh, Mike Tyson has that famous saying, right? It all, it's all... It always sounds good until someone gets punched in the face, right, or something like that. Exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of how investing goes, right? As soon as you say your t you see your ten thousand dollar investment go to six thousand dollars, you go, wait a minute, what's going on here, right? And same thing when you see your million dollars go down to six hundred thousand dollars, you go, okay, uh, this uh, you know, right in there, right out the store and buy low, sell high thing gets pretty difficult to stomach at some points, right? And typically, it gets more and more inconvenient, I would say, or or a little bit more stressful as you're getting closer to retirement. So a lot of people tend to make these uh, you know, shifts, especially in their maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s, where you're invested and you're not really sure that you have a financial plan, right? I think a lot of people that I meet with, Ron, where I find them coming in and out of the markets and doing things very inefficiently is typically when they don't have a comprehensive plan put together, right? They don't understand that if my risk tolerance, they don't know that, hey, if my portfolio goes down this much, this would be a normal recession or a normal cycle. Um, they don't understand where their income would come from. They might be invested way too aggress aggressively or overall, right? So they don't have that cohesive plan intact to where, yeah, it would be very uh, concerning if you didn't know what your plan could with withstand, right, during these types of cycles. And so I think that typically makes people react a little bit more um, panicky and things like that. Because like I said, from the from the outside looking in, it always just sounds easy, right? Buy and hold and, and, and buy low and sell high, right? But yeah. it, as you get more into the weeds about, okay, I have a million dollars and I'm taking forty or $50,000 a year out of that account, well, now it just dropped 30%, right? And I'm supposed to ride this out, right? So people go, that doesn't sound right. I might run out of money. I should sell, right? So, yeah. And that's because they don't really have that comprehensive plan. And they're not working with an advisor that's really helping making sure they're understanding what their goals and needs are of their risk tolerance, but overall their financial plan. Hey, uh, here's another thing, the, uh, conventional wisdom. Don't pay more in taxes than you have to. I mean, you want to pay your fair share, or maybe you don't, but you know, we all don't mind paying our fair <laughs> share, but my goodness, you shouldn't pay a penny more, and Logan Sadler yep. can help you uh, avoid that. Yeah, you're right, Ron. I mean, I don't think, uh, I, actually, I know, right? I've never heard this before, I and mean, I've heard a lot of things, but uh, and I'm pretty patriotic. I'd say I'm up there with, with the best of them. But I don't, I don't want to pay more in taxes just to be patriotic, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> nobody's signing up for more taxes. Um, 
the big thing is, I would say the real answer is most people are focused on tax preparation, right? They're looking at this year's taxes. And that's what most of us is when you go to your CPA and things like that, they're worried about this year, which, you know, more power to them. That's part of their jobs, right? Um, but as your financial advisor that's putting together a retirement plan, if you're, you know, Joe and Sue and you're 60 years old and you got a million dollars saved for retirement, you got Social Security, you got a house, you got all these other things going on, you're probably more worried about what type of taxes are you going to pay in your lifetime on your 401ks and IRAs and things like that, right? Yeah. Not necessarily just this year. And so when we're doing tax planning with our clients, it's not, hey, here's how much money we could save you this year on taxes, or here's what we could do for this year on taxes. Yes, there's some recommendations maybe here and there, but more of the conversation is, hey, over your lifetime, over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, here's what tax planning solutions we could throw in there and utilize to help our after-tax picture next year, five years or 10 years down the road, and maybe even passing it on to our kids more tax efficiently, right? So that's where a lot of people don't focus enough on tax planning. If you just joined us, you're listening to The Financial Beat, and that, of course, is the voice of Logan Sadler. If you want to call Logan's office and have a conversation with him one-on-one, the number to call is 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember that is by using the word PLAN, which we all need, 888-823-PLAN. We're talking about obvious financial moves that sometimes aren't so obvious. You know, we all strive, or most of us do, I think, to keep costs low, but sometimes that doesn't exactly work out either, does it? Yeah, no, it doesn't, right? Um, we all try to, to lower fees or, or look at what we're paying, and I think in today's world, uh, we're probably more aware of it than we have been in years past with our 401ks and IRAs and things like that. And one thing you're never going to hear me say is that fees are bad. I don't think fees are bad in anything we do, right? Um, but I do believe there's a cost of doing business and there's a value that you're going to get for that business. And then you don't want to be paying extra, right? You don't want to be paying more than you need to be paying uh, just to say you're paying a fee, right? Nobody wants to pay more than we have to. And so when I'm looking around, like I was just working with a client the other day, Ron, who came on board with our firm and her and her husband listened to the radio show and they ended up giving us a call. He was about he was about two years out from retirement and they had done a really good job putting together some assets. They had two or three annuities out there and then they had about $500,000 in brokerage accounts and things like that. And uh, everything else was pretty fair, but they really loved the value that we were bringing to them as far as their financial planning goes, looking at their total income picture and putting together a tax plan. But it was funny, I was actually to look at one of their annuities they had had, and it happened to be a variable annuity with a pretty prestigious company. And it was funny, so I had said, well, let me look into that annuity because it had an income rider and things like that on it. And I said, we don't typically like to move those if we're going to use it for income, Mm -hmm. um, but let me look into the fees and cost comparison and things like that. Long story short, right? They had thought it was a very low cost variable from their advisor they've had for 20 years. Turns out they were paying like 3.9% inside that variable annuity, right? So um, by being able to move that over to a newer annuity, uh, we were able to cut the cost in way more than half, right? And they were able to get the same income off of that annuity that they had wanted to get anyway, right? So just looking at cost and comparisons, it's it's very important. Again, if you have an advisor that goes above and beyond and is, is a full comprehensive planner, and they're really looking at everything, you might pay a little bit more for their advice. But as far as the investment, and things like that go, you shouldn't be paying more than you might need to in a lot of cases. Hey, another piece of advice that, you know, applies to life in general, don't put all your eggs in one basket, but at the same time, there are so many people who don't follow that rule. Yeah, it's true. It's true, right? And I think a lot of people aren't necessarily sure what baskets they have, right? So when you really look at their investments, and that's part of what our job is, obviously, after that discovery meeting, um, I ask for every client's statement, social security report, tax return, all of this stuff, right? Because if we're going to put together a comprehensive plan, we got to have the right information to do so. And by doing all that, we also look at a risk analysis, as well as we look at their overall asset allocation, but also where their overall assets are at, right? Their asset allocation map and it's funny because like I've had clients who are like, well, I'm pretty diversified, right? I have a few stocks that are uh, individuals, and then I have some index funds. Well, I'll look, and they'll own Apple, Google, and Tesla as the only three stocks they own. And then the only other uh, index funds they own is the S&P. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because Apple, Google, and Tesla are all in the S&P, right? So they own a lot of the same types of investments. So when they're going up or down, 
both those accounts were going up and down pretty much similarly than, than the other index funds and things like that that they had, right? So not understanding what buckets you have or what mutual funds and stocks you actually have inside your portfolio can be one of those things where I see people's money moving in correlation where the markets are going down and every account they have is going down, right? Which for some people that are more aggressive and long term, that might be fine. But again, for a lot of the clients that we're dealing with, well, uh, looking at retirement planning, a lot of them would like a more diversified approach and not having all the eggs in one basket. Yeah, some people think they're diversified and they're really not. So, you know, talk to Logan about that. Another thing that you and I have talked about so many times in this show is, you know, there are people out there who try to time the market. And as we have said so many times, it's virtually impossible to do that. You got to be, you know, got to be right on two occasions when to get out, when to get in, vice versa. You know, it's just really not possible to do that. Yet there are people out there who insist on trying. Yeah, it never fails, right? It never ceases to, to amaze me that people continue to try to do that, right? It's so, it's so hard, yet almost impossible for most people, right? And I would say pretty close to impossible. The funny part is I was having a conversation yesterday with a, with a client who was, again, uh, coming on board with our firm. And it was, it was funny because he had said, well, uh, he's like, I always hear people talk about time in the market. And he's like, it just doesn't seem that hard. And he goes, and then I found out, right? So, uh, of course, um, he had an incident where a few months ago, the market had went down and he had lost a pretty good chunk of, chunk of money for his retirement account. He had about 700000 in the market mm. and had lost a pretty good chunk due to the market going down around 15 20%. And what had happened was he pulled money out, right? And he's like, ah, it's just going to keep going down. I'll wait for it to come back up. And then, uh, as many of you know, markets rebounded over a pretty good period of time throughout 2023. And all of a sudden, right, he was like, well, dang it, right? So <laughs> he had pulled out at the bottom and then now getting back in at the top, right? Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where there's so many components that go into a retirement plan or go into investing. And so many things seem obvious, right? I always tell people when you come in and you're meeting with an advisor, some of the things that uh, we might say to you might seem like, well, yeah, I've heard that before. But one of the things that the advisor should really be able to do for you is help orchestrate the financial plan and give you that continued advice and that counsel. And that's where I always tell clients where we set ourselves apart is, I don't come on the radio and talk about we have the best managed funds or we have the best annuities or we have the best this, right? But I do feel like we put together a very good comprehensive plan and a lot of the value that we bring to the table, yes, we think we do a good job managing money. Yes, we think we do a good job putting together the financial plans, but I know that we do a good job by seeing the plan to and through retirement and making sure you have somebody and you have a team by your side to help guide you through this next phase. So if you're somebody out there, again, Maybe you have $200,000, maybe you have over $2 million and you're looking to get a plan together and maybe even looking for a second opinion. I definitely think it's worth your time to come in, spend an hour with me at one of our offices or via Zoom and and see if we'd be a good fit to work together and see if we're a good firm to help get you to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. Very important phone number. Hope you've written it down already. If not, do it now. 888-823-7526 plan. That is a number for Regary Financial with offices in Redlands and also Hammett, wherever you are in Southern California. Uh, call that number and you can arrange to have a conversation with Logan Sattler. He's not going to pass you off to somebody else. You will have your actual discovery meeting with Logan Sattler. It won't cost you anything and won't carry with it any kind of obligation. So you have nothing to lose. Get to know Logan. He can get to know you. 888 888- 823 plan. That is your number to call for Regary Financial. Logan Sadler and I will be right back in just a moment on the Financial Beat. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal, and it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. 
Everyone has the perfect song for different events. That song you play at the gym to get you really pumped up. And the song that you play on your happiest days. And there are those songs for even your saddest ones. But what song do you hear when you push play on your portfolio? If you don't know, or if you don't like the tune, do something about it. Get a financial plan in place today, and you won't have to wonder what song plays next. Call Regary Financial at 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526 for a complimentary financial review. 888-823-PLAN. Financial stability, relaxing retirement, tax reductions. Do those things sound like music to your ears? Then you've tuned to the right show, because here on The Financial Beat, we want to give you the tools to build your financial plan. So don't change that dial, because Logan Sadler has some information that will leave you singing the tune of a better retirement. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, your financial maestro, I call him. He's the vice president and chief uh, investment officer at uh, Regary Financial in Hemet and also Redlands. There are folks all over uh, California who count on Logan Sandler to help them get to and through retirement. And of course, folks in other places as well. Logan works with three different generations of client families. Some clients who are very concerned about uh, retiring very soon. Others who are just starting out and so they have different needs. Logan Sandler, well-versed in all things financial. And many of the clients, though, have been with the firm for more than 25 years and Logan Sadler is anxious to talk to you, gets to know new people every single week, folks who call in after this show. Uh, the number to call if you'd like to add yourself to the list is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. You can have a conversation that's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that conversation. So why not? 888 888- a two three plan. That's your number to call. Hey Logan, a little uh, history lesson here. And uh, gosh, this is something that uh, you need to think about having young children in the house. But you may remember it from your own uh, childhood, all those years ago, sixty three years ago, August twelfth, wow. nineteen sixty. Green Eggs and Ham was published. <laughs> Green Eggs and Ham. I should have known that's where you were going. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know what turn we're going to take <laughs> on this show. Green Eggs and Ham was published consisting of just 50 words with the letters J, P, Q, V, and Z never appearing anywhere in the book. You wow, thought about that? I... No, I have not. I wasn't aware it was 63 years ago either, so that's pretty interesting. And it's yeah. funny you mention that because I do read uh, Dr. Seuss, as many of you, well, as many of you guys know, I do have a younger, well, two younger kids at home, but one of them that's in that prime age right there where yeah. Green Eggs and Ham and many different Dr. Seuss books are uh, definitely back in cycle here at my house right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, just something to think about, you know. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Very been, interesting. You know, it's been around for 63 years, and uh, I remember reading it to, to my kids when they were growing up, too. So, you know, kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that's crazy. Let's One go of those to, staples. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's go to the mailbag here. Got some great questions. First one is from Brad in Idlewild. And Brad has a simple question. He says, is it a bad idea to do a Roth conversion if I have a high income? Yeah, that's a uh, great question, Brad. Um, As many of you guys know, I love talking about tax strategies for retirement. So, Brad, one of the things I would say is not necessarily, and that's probably not the answer you're looking for, Hmm. uh, but let me walk you through that. So, you know, if a client that we're dealing with has a pretty high income right now, but is going to probably continue to have a high income. That's the answer I would want to know when we're looking at your future earnings. And that's one thing we could map out in our retirement plan there as far as, you know, when you're in retirement years or when you're years down the road, are you still going to be at a higher income? Does it make sense to wait to do conversions till maybe a lower income bracket? Or are you one of those clients that's probably going to be in a pretty high income bracket throughout your working years and then well into your retirement? Then it still might make sense to maybe do some Roth conversions um, if we're able to do them at a a rather efficient level. So those are the two of the things I'd want to walk through there because it's not just like, oh, okay, you make a lot of money, you never should do Roth conversions. That doesn't necessarily make sense because if you're going to be in a higher income bracket down the road, many of us are doing Roth conversions because we're worried about tax rates going up. 
right? So it's one of those things where we definitely want to weigh out the balance there and make sure that we're looking at what our future tax rates potentially could be and then make that tax planning adjustment now and do those Roth conversions. So just an example, you know, if you're in the 24% tax bracket and you make, you know, 190 to 364, um, if you're probably going to continue to be in that 24% tax bracket throughout retirement, uh, it might make sense to do those conversions now, um, just depending on where you fall in those brackets, just because if tax rates do go up, it's a way for you to uh, you know, may potentially pay a lot less in taxes by doing them now. All right, Brad, hope you'll follow it up with a phone call, 888-823-PLAN. You can actually sit down and talk to Logan about all this in uh, much more detail. Next question here is from David in Harupa Valley. I don't know if we've had a question from Harupa Valley before. But Might be our first one. Yeah. David says, I'm trying to get to the $1 million mark in my savings before I retire in a few years. So I started a consulting company on the side to earn some extra income. Is there anything I should be doing to save money on taxes with this new income? And how many times have you heard people say that? I need to get to a million dollars before I retire. <laughs> What's funny is that's the first time I've ever heard that today, right? But um, <laughs> but I heard it twice yesterday and then three times the day before that, right? Really? But uh, no, thanks for writing, David. We, we always appreciate the questions. Um, you know, first off, you might not need to get to that million dollar mark, uh, just depending on what other assets you have with Social Securities, your income level, expenses, all that stuff that's going to factor in uh, to your retirement plan is going to be what's key. So I wouldn't necessarily be hung up on that. Uh, if that's what your overall goal is. Now, again, some people, we just like to say we have a million dollars, right? So if that's your goal, more power to you, right? Now, as far as tax savings, unfortunately, when you're looking at things, you know, there's only a few different things you could do at this point to start looking at tax uh, savings and things like that, which would be 401ks, IRAs, and uh, things like that, deferred comp investments, where you'd be able to defer some of those tax rates. But one of the things I would start looking at also is that million dollars you're getting is it all taxable money, right? Is it all 401k, 403b, IRAs, stuff like that? Or do you have Roth components in there? Because if you're at an age right now where you maybe still can do some into Roth, depending on your income levels, it might be a good time to start stacking away some tax-free money that might get you a little bit more after-tax money than that million dollars you had an envision, right? So give me a call or we'd love to set up a call or a Zoom. We could touch base on that and kind of see overall what your income picture looks like and where the income's coming from, what types of income. And then we could put together a little bit more of a detailed plan around that. David, thank you very much for the question. And uh, seriously, call that number and uh, have a conversation with Logan, 888-823-PLAN. One more question today, uh, Logan. It's from Melanie in San Bernardino. And Melanie says, I was recently diagnosed with breast cancer and will start treatment within the next two weeks. I'm going to miss a lot of work over the next six months, so I'd like to take money out of my retirement accounts to help cover missed paychecks and medical bills. But I'm only 57, so I'm worried about the tax implications of doing that. What do I need to know? Yeah, great question. And, and first off, sounds like you're going through a lot of... Uh a lot of stuff there. So we, we do appreciate the question and wish you, uh, wish you well on everything. You know, so first off, I always tell clients when, when you start to go through something like this, the first thing you want to do is take a second to, to really think things through. And obviously, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on as far as emotions and, and things like that, obviously, right? Um, so one thing I would look at is looking out of your retirement accounts and things like that is some of them like 401ks and stuff like that and IRAs can have some exceptions, right? Some of them have some major healthcare exceptions and things like that. So first thing is I'd like you to come in and we could go over what accounts you have and then we can give you the up-to-date rules on which ones you might be able to tap into or might not be able to tap into um, and then worry about what the tax implications or penalties might be like, um, if any, on those to make sure that you're getting this as efficiently as possible to make up that income gap. Because again, I've had a lot of clients where we go through things like this and there's certain loans and stuff like that you could do out of 401ks and stuff like that to where it might be a good little Band-Aid, just depending on what assets you got out there. So give us a call and let's go through the checklist here and make sure that we're not missing anything and making sure that we understand the full picture because you're definitely going through one of those scenarios where you want to make sure you definitely have somebody on your side to walk through all the intricate parts of this because you're definitely going to be going through a lot, it sounds like. So hopefully, uh, like I said, wish you the best and give us a call. I'd love to dive a little further with you. So many people going through the same kind of thing. And uh, if you talk to Logan Sadler, you know, have a conversation. He may tell you about some options that you have 
that uh, you might not know about for sure. But uh, talk in more detail about it. But uh, uh, go ahead and make that call, Melanie. It is 888-823-PLAN. You know, a lot of folks listening to the show today, and I'm confident that you're going to get a lot of phone calls after this show, Logan. And I know you meet with new folks every week. Why is it so important to give Regary Financial a call right now? Yeah, one of the biggest things that we're seeing is there's so many of you guys out there that are getting close to retirement or maybe just starting retirement, and you don't really have a clear picture of what your retirement is going to look like, right? A lot of you guys out there might have investments, or you might have had an advisor that you work with that advises you on buying a stock or annuities or, or insurance products, but you don't really have a team to help put together all of the pieces and look at your full financial plan, right? And there's so many people out there that are worried about running out of money, or you're worried about what type of taxes am I going to pay in retirement? And you're not you're not really having an advisor that's helping you put together all those pieces and look at all those solutions and concerns that you might have as far as your retirement plan goes. And that's where um, again we offer a complimentary cons- consultation where you can come into one of our offices or via Zoom and let us take you through our first meeting and show you um, what types of items and conversations that we have throughout it. And then that's typically enough where clients go, you know what, my advisor is not asking me these questions, or I've never been asked, you know, what I. I care about in retirement or what are my concerns about financial planning and really showing that we, we take a deep dive into your retirement plan and put together a custom approach for you and your family to achieve your retirement plan and not get you just to retirement, but also get you through retirement. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember that number is 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, get a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Hope you're having a great day today. We appreciate your spending a little time with us. And Logan, as always, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you today. Yeah, as always, Ron, I enjoy it. And uh, thank you to all the listeners out there that have been listening to the show, the podcast, the YouTube channels. We always appreciate the support and we'll be back here again next week. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.